try to get everything down. Again, those three things, the science, the materials, resources, and some way to manage the process. This graphic will be uh, illustrative of how the gears work together and how we make them. So as we jump right into the science here, this is what is dawning on everybody. This is a headline out of Time Magazine in 2004, The Secret Killer, The Surprising Link Between Inflammation and Heart Attacks, Cancer, and Alzheimer's and Other Diseases. This started off in the early part of our decade, um, really splashing in, in front of the world the concept that there's something here, there's something driving all this, and I think what we're finding out is that there is a common thread that links a lot of otherwise disparate or a, a separate a disease entities together, and that is inflammation. So when we ask the question, what is inflammation? I used to always think when I first started studying this, it was about hitting your thumb with a hammer because it always swelled up, and therefore it was inflamed. And, and as I started studying and understanding what the big deal was, I realized that, that inflammation is just the body's way of protecting itself and healing itself, and it can result from a, a variety of things that we've got listed. But there's a, do, there's a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde kind of proposition here. There's a good face and a bad face to this, and that's where this starts to get fun and exciting. When acute becomes chronic and when local becomes systemic. So when we talk about um, defenses and the immune system, we just we have to realize the, the, the big principle here is that the immune system is about the body's barrier surfaces, antimicrobial body fluids, normal flora, mucus, cilia, uh, protective reflexes, internal cellular biochemical immune system, all of that stuff together protect us from the outside world. And if they didn't work, we wouldn't exist. We would have died a long time ago and ceased to, to be here. So the question is, what happens when the body's defense systems are compromised? What happens when stuff gets under our gum tissue and breaks that, that uh, barrier down? Or something gets underneath our nail? Uh, really, the cuticle and the seal of our nail is, again, it's another place where we're sealing out the external from the internal. We're keeping the outside world out and the inside world in. So what happens when that becomes compromised? We start this off by saying, well, there's two kinds of immunity. There's an innate or an inborn part of this immune system, and there is an adaptive, and we, we very often just think of the adaptive because that's what vaccinations, that's what acquired Im, uh, immunity is about, is my, is my antibodies being formed to, to protect me against the bad bugs and so forth. And that's about all I'm really going to say about the acquired or the, the number two uh, immune, immune uh, defense system here. We're going to spend all of our time talking about the innate or the immune system. This is the primary defenders. Um, this is antigen nonspecific. It doesn't matter what the insult or the assault is all about. So innate immunity, um, PAMP, pathogen associated molecular patterns. Um, that's a new word to many of us, but it's a word that's very common in the medical world. And what it basically means is it's the lipopolysaccharides from gram negative or the peptidoglycans from gram positive bacteria they do something to our host cells that produce a reaction so that we can defend ourselves. And our host cells have a mechanism through pattern recognition receptors and toll-like receptors that recognize what that is, and it begins a series of uh, biochemical processes that pretty much look like this slide right here, which is illustrative of the steps in the innate immune system. Uh, this is basically a, a big shot. We're going to dive in here and just to, for the next few minutes and talk about the specifics of each thing that's starting to happen as we go along. When we start up here in, in uh, step A, um, again, a, a, a pathogen-associated molecular pattern is a, is a lipopolysaccharide or a peptidoglycan. This is, these are the remnants on the cell wall of the bacteria, and we humans don't have enzymes uh, capable of digesting those proteins, and so they become foreign and remain foreign to us. And what happens is that there's an upregulation through this process, uh, generally mediated by our cytokines, which we'll talk about in a minute, which recognize the lipopolysaccharide or the endotoxins from these foreign substances and bacteria. And, and they complex or bind in a lipopolysaccharide binding protein. Now, these are found on all microbes. It's something that they share in common, and, and uh, everybody or everything has it. Once they complex and we have a bound lipopolysaccharide, the pattern recognition receptors or, or toll-like receptors 
on the walls of the host cell, these are the macrophages, my own immune system cells, recognize that and complex. And this sets up a nuclear factor kappa beta protein uh, which transcribes or upregulates my host cell DNA to produce certain proteins called cytokines. And in a nutshell, that's, that's how this works. That's what's triggering all this. Just a review for, you know, from the biochemistry of this and the genetics. Uh, the transcription factor on the bottom here, you see uh, any, any protein that's created is a consequence of DNA being transcribed into mRNA, which then translates into the production of a protein. And cytokines, all these nasty things that we've been uh, talking about in periodontics, these are all proteins. And so we have to ask the upstream question, well, where did they come from? How, did they be, how do we get them in our body? And it comes through this process right here. So then we have to say, well, then how did the cell code for this? How did it get to the point where it knew to, uh, to create genetic expression so that those proteins showed up? And that's the process. And so down here in the corner, we have cytokines, such as interleukins 1, 6, 8, tissue necrosis factor, and a whole host of others um, that are produced. And these mediate the responses, which include vascular permeability, uh, fever, uh, phagocytosis, and uh, the production of more cytokine and chemokine production. Now, this is a good thing. None, none of what I've said is bad. This is all good because this is how we protect ourselves from the outside world. So what happens then as a consequence of the cytokines is that we have coagulation pathways kicking in, complement activation, and cytokine feedback loops happening. And so we're not yet part over, over here to F on the slide where we have inflammation and damage. That's coming in, in, in just a minute or two. But everything again on here is good. This was designed by nature. This was, it's in nature, it's innate, where it's inborn, it's just automatic, and it happens for all of us all the time, anytime a pathogen associated molecular pattern or endotoxin comes in contact with us or our macrophages. 